Welcome to episode two of Aerospace Crash Course. I'm I Can Science That, and last time we talked about an aircraft flying over the curved surface of the Earth and how it must fly in a curved path in order to do that. We saw that due to the nature of aerodynamics, an aircraft naturally does that by simply following along with a line of constant air density. After that last video, I had planned to get into some of the more fundamental behaviors and, and fundamentals of aerodynamics so that we could use those to go forward and talk about today's topic with a better understanding of exactly how it works. But after last time's video, there were a lot of people left with a lot of questions. Um, and I felt like maybe it's a better idea to address those immediately in a very overview kind of way. And then we'll go back and fill in those fundamentals that I talked about. And we'll do that math um, that is necessary for that. But for now, let's start with just an overview of, uh, of the rotational part of dipping your nose. And we'll do it as just a very high level overview, no math at all. Um, I'll just talk you through the basics of the principles and then in a follow-up video, we'll come back and learn how this all works. Last time I showed this diagram where the plane follows the curve. And we talked about how the aerodynamics are such that that naturally happens. However, my airplane and my little diagram here isn't rotating as it follows the curve. I just showed it sort of falling along the curve. Many people pointed out that that plane is at a very strange angle right now and we really can't leave it like that. So perhaps that is what we mean when we say dipping the nose. It could mean that that plane has to rotate as it follows the curve. Maybe we, all, we already understood that the plane, of course, isn't going to fly off into space like I suggested last time. We understood that wasn't, that's not the issue. The issue is that the plane must rotate as it follows the curve. Absolutely, that's true. Let's take a look at that now. Uh, to make this diagram a little more comfortable for us, let me just rotate it up so that the plane is up in the center of the diagram here. I'm just gonna do a rotation. All right, uh, and we can see clearly that the plane's nose is pointing up into the sky. It is no longer parallel to the ground below it. And we, we just can't have the plane pointing its nose up like that. The air will be coming in from the side and it is an airplane. So it is the, it is the, the air speed, the, air, the, the velocity of the air relative to the plane that creates our lift and, and drag. And we need that to be more or less uh, level with the plane in order to keep flying the way we want to go. So we need to get that nose down. The plane is going to have to dip the nose, right? Quick tangent right here. Um, remember last time I said that you know dipping your nose is an imprecise thing. It's unclear exactly what you mean. And in order to avoid confusion and fighting, be more clear about what you mean. If you mean following the curve, like we talked about last time, then say following the curve. If you mean rotate to match the curvature of the earth, then say that. Uh, saying dip your nose is just too vague and not clear, and that is the cause of a lot of this uh, problem. So let's see the plane dipping its nose. The plane has come back to level and of course that means, yes, it had to dip its nose to get there. So before I talk about exactly what makes the plane do that, uh, or how we get the plane to do that, which obviously we must, um, let's sidetrack things a little bit to talk about just sort of a vocab word that I'm gonna be using, um, stability. Now in aerodynamics, in engineering in general, stability means uh, the situation where if there's any disturbance in in the situ in the situation uh, that will naturally restore itself back to the way it started so that means it is stable something that is stable will uh, correct itself 
for anything that, that starts to wobble or shimmy. And the best way to really illustrate this is, is just with this, with this classic diagram. Uh, on the left, we have a ball sitting at the point of a pyramid. Now, it could be in equilibrium, meaning that the ball can be held in place there. It, it would take, you know, like a, a circus performer to, you know, balance, uh, or, or maybe we could get, you know, uh, Nathan Thompson out here to, to balance a golf ball for us or something, right? Um, if, you, if you just keep it balanced just right, you can keep it there, but it's unstable. And that means any little disturbance, if you blow on it, if you sneeze on your meatball there, it's going to roll down the hill one way or the other, uh, right? And so that means it's unstable. If a little disturbance comes along, like, uh, like you sneeze on it, um, then what will happen is it will move slightly to one side. And when it moves slightly to one side, that's going to cause it to just roll right on down the hill. On the other hand, this situation is a ball wedged down into a little V structure. We've just inverted it. And now that ball is very stable in there. If you sneeze on that, uh, you might jostle the ball a little bit, but it'll sell right back down into the V. If you, you know, if you're carrying this across, across the living room floor, you can jiggle that thing all around and you'd have to knock it really, really hard to get the ball to fly out of that V. Um, as long as the ball, you can jostle it a lot. As long as it stays within the V, it is stable and the ball will naturally settle itself right back where it started. That's what stability means. Let's apply the idea of stability to aerodynamics, particularly to this pitching the nose situation. So we will look at the pitch stability of a typical aircraft. When the nose pitches up, like so, if the aircraft is designed to be stable, then the nose will naturally bring itself right back down. This is a highly desirable situation and we design for that on purpose. Now, what that means is uh, if the aircraft finds itself nosing up because it's going around the curved the curved line of constant air density, then there's a natural tendency built into the aircraft to cause it to bring that nose right back down so that it is moving in the original direction that was set up. Uh, okay, so that's, that's aircraft stability. Um, and we design aircraft to do that on purpose. You might be saying, that sounds really convenient, right? And then we just say, oh, it's, we made it, we just designed the aircraft to be stable so that it would follow the curve of the earth. Actually, no, uh, the curve of the earth was not a consideration at all for aircraft stability. It's just a side effect. Um, in fact, you may even find aircraft documents that talk about how the aircraft stability and design was built around a flat earth assumption. Um, we say that in those documents because we know the earth is not flat, but we don't bother with that calculation because it's not significant for this aspect of the design. It just happens to turn out since you all have gotten me interested in the idea of flat earth. Um, I have looked at this and I say, I, I realize now, Oh, hey, look at that. Uh, it turns out that aircraft stability just happens to make it follow the curve of the earth. Um, why do I make my aircraft stable, you might ask, if it's not for that reason? The reason is because uh, we want the aircraft to be controllable. We want it so that if any little thing comes along and jostles the aircraft, like a little gust of wind, that it doesn't send the thing off into a loop-de-loop -loop, tumbling and, and falling to the earth. We want to make sure if a little gust of wind comes along, then maybe the aircraft jostles a bit, but then it settles right back down to that nice level flight that is easily controllable. Uh, and well, one example of a disturbance that could occur is if the line of constant pressure you're following is not a straight line. 
and, and many times it is not a straight line, right? Storms come along and you get an updraft and, uh, and you'll get a, a, you know what we, we see on TV all the time, they call it, TV pilots call it an air pocket. Oh, folks, we just hit an air pocket. Um, and, and they say that when the plane suddenly just falls out of the sky for a while. Um, what they really hit was probably a downdraft, right? The air is not actually all that stable. Um, and because of that, we want to make sure the aircraft is stable to allow the pilot to be able to con you know, control the thing. And that is built in on purpose into cars, just the same as it's built into aircraft. And it just so happens uh, that's going to dip the nose of the aircraft for you. So let's summarize what we found. We found that a stable aircraft naturally corrects its own angle, that you don't have to do this, the aircraft will do it by itself. And we deliberately design aircraft to be stable. Sometimes uh, high performance you know, fighter jets are designed to be unstable, but in that case, we, we rely on computers to stabilize the aircraft so that the pilot doesn't have to to do that by himself. Uh, does the pilot then need to dip the nose? This comes right back to it again, is here we've, we've described that following the curve of the earth will require the aircraft to rotate. Yes, it will. The aircraft's nose has to dip as it goes along the curve. But if you ask a pilot, hey, pilot, are you dipping the nose as you fly? The pilot's gonna say, no, he's just going to say no. Why is he going to say no? Well, there's, there's actually a number of reasons why, why they'll say no. But what we just talked about in this video is that the aircraft dips its own nose. That's just how aircraft do. Uh, so the pilot, no, he's not going to need to do that. What does the pilot do then? Right? Uh, if the planes just fly in themselves, right? Uh, and, you know, I heard a I heard a flat earther ranting about how pilots don't do anything. Um, let's think about it for a minute. Uh, the pilot is the one who decides where the plane is supposed to go, right? Um, if, the, if the pilot's decision is to just cruise along at a nice steady altitude, uh, they don't have to do very much about that. The plane is designed to do that for the most part all by itself and we will definitely set up an altitude hold autopilot to assist with that. Um, it doesn't take much to cruise along in a nice steady level altitude, but what about the times that's not what you're doing? <laughs> you're taking off or you're landing, that's not cruising at a steady altitude. Um, what if you're turning um, and so forth, right? You, you don't just point your nose and then walk away. Uh, not, not a good idea. Not to mention, uh, the air is not always as stable as we've described in these diagrams. Um, there are updrafts, downdrafts, crosswinds, uh, wind shear is what, what you call it when you, you get into a situation where the wind suddenly changes. Uh, and that absolutely happens. And we need the pilot to be on top of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all of these diagrams, uh, I've shown how the plane will follow along with a nice constant line of constant density, what do you do when that line of constant density starts wigging out on you? Well, uh, you better pray you have a pilot in there who can help you. Uh, and finally, I should note, and this is a common theme amongst uh, science topics in general, is that I have skimmed over some details here um, that maybe if we continue this series and people are interested, we can learn more and we can find, you know, there'll be a future video where I say, hey, remember that, that slide back then? Um, I skipped over something really important. Um, and maybe we'll come back and we'll learn about more aspects. But for now, I just wanted to cover that the pilot does not have to do anything to correct for this rotation effect because the aircraft designers made the aircraft stable, pitch, stable in the pitch um, mode. And because of that, uh, the aircraft will level itself um, as it flies. That's not something that the pilot necessarily needs to do. Although I will say the pilot will be looking at his artificial horizon or at the actual horizon 
and checking on things and making sure that everything is trimmed out right and flying nice and level like he wants to. Okay, so I think after this very high level non-mathematical overview of what stability means and why we would want stability, you might still be left thinking that that was quite magical. My description of stability is just like, oh, it just magically does this. It just naturally does. And I didn't explain how that happens at all. Uh, and so you could, you could honestly be curious uh, about how that happens and maybe skeptical about whether I'm just making stuff up here or is there something to back this up? Um, and to that, I will say, uh, yeah, let's do that in the next video. I plan to start with how this works and then get into uh, what the result is. But uh, after seeing the response to the last video, uh, I decided instead, let's look at the result first. And then in following videos, we'll learn the, some of the basics, some of the fundamentals about how we make the stability thing work. Um, and actually it's, it comes out pretty simple. There, there might be a little bit of math in future videos as we explain how the stability works, but um, nothing, nothing too bad, I, I would say. Okay, so that's, that's where we're at. Uh, see you in the next video.